President Obama canceled NASA's plan to replace the space shuttle in favor of a more modest program, and then Congress slashed the funding for that. So for the first time in 50 years, America is not the leader in spaceflight. Fact is, we couldn't launch an astronaut today if we had to. With the end of an era, we wondered what would happen to the generation that put America in space. So last July, when the smoke cleared from the last space shuttle launch, we stayed behind in Brevard County, Florida, the home of the Kennedy Space Center. What comes after reaching for the stars? For many in Brevard County, the answer is a hard landing. The story will continue in a moment. There was nothing like it in the world. And lift off, the final lift off of Atlantis. Arguably the greatest engineering achievement of man. At lift off, it weighed four and a half million pounds. Its top speed, 17,000 miles an hour. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. It was built by the hands of people like Lou Hanna. It was the experience and the job of a lifetime. Uh, I was working on a pad one day with a friend of mine, and he's a crane operator too. And uh, I asked him, I said, how many other crane operators do you suppose that there are doing what we're doing? There's two, you and me. Shuttle work wasn't just work. There was enormous pride in doing for America what no other workers in the world could even dare. Lou Hanna manned a gigantic crane that cleared the platform before launch. He worked on the first shuttle in 1981. America's first space shuttle. And the last, 135 missions later. What did seeing the last shuttle launch mean to you? I felt anger. Anger? Oh yeah, because this does not have to be the last launch. It doesn't have to end this way. I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't compute, and I guess I'm still in denial because <laughs> I'm thinking they're gonna call me back one day. We got a launch coming up, we need your help. <laughs> How can they do that? They did it to save $3 billion a year. Now, the only way an American can fly into space is to buy a seat on a Russian rocket. At the Kennedy Space Center, 7,000 workers lost their jobs. Main gear touchdown. The space shuttle pulls into port for the last time. 50 years of liftoffs are becoming eight months of layoffs. Have a look around Brevard County. It's shrinking. Lots of people are moving away taking businesses down with them. It was like, bam, gone, gone, gone. The work ethic that built the shuttle keeps Chris Milner fighting to hang on. How long did you work at the Space Center? Eight years. And your wife? 29 years. Both laid off? Both laid off. In the spirit of an entrepreneur, Milner planned for the layoffs. Five years ago, he launched a landscape business on the side, and then he added a sign shop in this industrial park. Still, there was one thing he didn't plan on. Uh, seafood is gone, and there's nothing there. Edwards exterminating is the only one that's left, and it's right around the corner. Uh, but basically, everything's empty. It's, it's, it's a nightmare. Everybody's been laid off. It's a ripple effect. Business is closing down, and it affects everybody else, and it affects me. The 7,000 layoffs at the Space Center triggered 7,000 more in the community. Unemployment has been close to 11%. People are moving away. People are going up north. Nothing's happening here. I know people move all the way to Seattle for a job, left their house, left the key in the front door. Here you go. It's gone. Milner had 12 employees in the lawn business. Now he has three. You know, you're running these two businesses. Yes. How many hours a day are you working? 
<laughs> literally. Literally. I'm, I'm here at 7 a.m. in the morning, and you know, the last couple of weeks I've been here until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. My last day off was uh, Christmas. Working 17 hours a day, seven days a week, Yes. can't be all that good for your health. No. My wife's worried. She's scared. She's told me that. And she's taken out a life insurance policy on him. But at the same time, she knows what I got to do. And the problem is, is we have a 12-year-old at the house that doesn't understand because he's never had to go without. He's constantly asking for McDonald's. We don't get McDonald's anymore. That's beautiful. This isn't the first hard landing on the Space Coast. There were big layoffs in 1972 after the last mission to the moon. But here's why today is worse. When we left the moon, NASA was already years into designing the shuttle. And it looked like it would be that way now, because President Bush approved a program to follow the shuttle. The new manned space program rocket was supposed to be called Constellation. Mm -hmm. And now you guys call it Cancellation, Cancellation. unfortunately. Lou Hanna and Joe Urich, Holly Petrucci, and Mike Carpenter planned to transfer from shuttle to Constellation. They were encouraged when candidate Barack Obama came to Brevard County in 2008, three months before the election. I'm going to ensure that our space program doesn't suffer when the shuttle goes out of service by making sure that all those who work in the space industry in Florida do not lose their jobs when the shuttle is retired because we can't afford to lose their expertise. Well, we were lied to when uh, Obama came through. Uh, gave us a lot of hope and supposedly a lot of change. Well, I've got change in my pocket, but the hope is gone. In 2010, President Obama canceled Constellation and turned over development of a new spaceship to private enterprise. Then, Congress dealt another blow by cutting the funding for the Obama plan in half. At the very least, it will be five years before America flies astronauts again. Now, the workers with that expertise Mr. Obama referred to are setting course for Carol Bess. And I've had several who've told me, I was considering suicide before I came to you. Carol Bess is a bankruptcy attorney. What drove them to that point? They felt like failures. You know, here I am, I can't pay my debts. And, and I'm probably worth more dead than alive if I have life insurance. And folks either aren't finding work, or if they do, they're making a lot less than they were before. Correct, and that's not gonna change. These people have no hope. It could still get a lot worse, I think. Following the Great Recession, we visited a lot of communities that lost their main employer, but never one like Brevard County. We learned about the sense of loss with our first question to Lucas Maxwell, who used to handle the dangerous fuel for the rockets. What was it like when it was launched? Paint that picture for me. Awesome. Thank you. No. The thought was too much for a moment. Then he came back to tell us why. Made your heart stop. It's awesome, no matter what. You know, the pride that goes into a vehicle like that. But uh, I knew it was the end, too. You know, I knew I was going to be out on the street. And Space Shuttle for you, I have the sense, was a statement about the country. Oh, yeah, absolutely. This is a matter of national pride. The end of the shuttle is threatening businesses that families have built over decades, like shuttles, the first bar you come to leaving the space center. Not just a bar, really. It's the place where astronauts land. In July, before the last launch, we stopped in to see owner Bill Grillo. How many employees did you have at the peak? We had 25. And now? We're down to eight. And you're one of them? Yeah. If it, if it comes down to just myself, my son, and a cook, we'll hang on. Shuttles will be here. I won't let it go. Seven months later, this is Shuttles Today. I'm sorry about this. When we were here before, uh, you were optimistic. You said this place wouldn't close. Yeah. Uh, within 45 days after the last shuttle, we lost 70% of our business. We weren't able to sustain as much as it, it killed me to do that, I had to. And you've been gone for a couple of months now. But I don't think you've moved a thing in here. I, I can't right now. It's, um, it's too painful. 
to do that. Um, I got a lot of a lot of my heart is here, and I can't take anything off the walls yet. It's not just a business. No. No. This is an institution. And I, I don't want to be the one that um, takes it apart. No one we met back in July expected to be the one to take apart the life they'd known. Some were the second or third generation in their family to work at the Space Center. Before the last launch, we met several at a job center applying for the remaining aerospace work. Sammy Rivera worked on the shuttle 26 years, reviewing engineering drawings. I figured the day I wake up dead, I won't go to work. <clears throat> It's the bottom line. There's, there's not going to be anything for me to retire on. We caught up with him today. You didn't expect to be unemployed 11 months and counting. At the max, I figured three months. I've applied for engineering jobs. I've applied for technician jobs. I've applied for entry-level jobs. Have you had any interviews? Three. Total of three? Total of three. Three interviews in 11 months? Yes, sir. Do you have health insurance? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. My health insurance terminated on my last day of employment. How are you getting along? A lot of prayer. Uh, the medications that I was on, out-of-pocket expense, runs me over $800 a month. with no money coming in. I can't afford that. So he's taking only one of the two pills that his doctors say he has to take to avoid a heart attack. You know when you're raising that flag in your front yard? Yes, sir. What are you thinking? This is my country. And I can't let it go down without a fight. The four remaining shuttles are headed to museums. Atlantis will be on display at the Kennedy Space Center. She was designed for 100 missions, but flew only 33. Like so many in Brevard County, Florida, she was pulled from the service of her country long before she was ready.